The Note 20 Ultra that we all deserve is here, the Qualcomm 865 Plus Absolute Elite model. I think I'm the only guy on YouTube who has used all three different Galaxy Note 20 Ultra variants. First was the Absolute Peasant Edition of the Note 20 Ultra with 8 gigs of RAM and Exynos 990 chip. Then I got the slightly better Exynos 990 processor Note 20 Ultra with 12 gigs of RAM, which is for the UK, Europe, and Indian market. And then the Elite, the absolute best, Snapdragon 865 Plus, which is for USA, Canada, South Korea, and China. The crazy part is that all these phones cost the same money. It's absolutely baffling. Anyway, so I bought this phone out of my own pocket and uh, let's start off with the unboxing to see if there's actually any difference compared to the Exynos model. So as usual, we have the 25 watt charger along with headphones, USB cable, all that good stuff, but What's that? A case? I don't remember seeing that on the Exynos model. A protective case is something even a $190 phone offers and Samsung doesn't give that apparently. But okay, okay, not a big deal. So I've used the Qualcomm model for about a day and I haven't really noticed any difference compared to my Exynos model when it comes to just real life social media application usage or watching YouTube videos. They are pretty similar, which is why a normal customer won't be able to see any difference. But one of them is a sloppy, slithery snake that is just pretending to be all that ultra we gotta find which one is the real ultra the actual real life difference between the two similar yet drastically different phones so let's begin with the general speed test so starting up from a boot up test of both phones just to quickly see the difference of which phone actually loads up their respective software first for the sake of the test as always i'm including this and uh, pretty much there's just a one second difference qualcomm is just a little bit faster than the Exodus model. Again, scrolling around looks really, really smooth. When it comes to opening up of system-based applications, they had about the same speed, same kind of animations, and with the third-party apps like Instagram, Spotify, or Reddit, they all are pretty fast, pretty equal on both phones. So far, so good, but I started to see differences as I launched heavy games when seven to eight apps were already open in the background. The Qualcomm variant was quicker with the launch of PUBG game, which is one of my favorite game to play on phones and same thing with the high quality racing car game Asphalt 9. Another area where Qualcomm variants have always been better than the Exodus model is when it comes to the GPU based rendering. So I edited a 100 megapixel moon image on both phones, applying different effects and setting the sharpness all the way to the max. And finally rendering the image in the maximum quality on both phones and guess what? Qualcomm was again faster than the Exynos model. Next up, to check out the video editing performance, I loaded up a 4K clip on both phones. I was able to play this 4K clip on the timeline on both devices without any issue and rendered this on both phones in 4K and just like that, Qualcomm just blazed through the loading times, whereas the Exodus model took its sweet time. Keep in mind, I had all the apps open up in the background, so that may have contributed towards the slowness, but yeah, a huge difference in the video rendering. Finally, I wanted to check out the RAM management and pretty much everything was kept in the memory by both variants, except there was one refresh on the Exodus model, but other than that, all the apps loaded up really, really quick, kept in the memory. Pretty much 12 gigs of RAM is the absolute ultra standard, six to seven apps can be there. RAM management is not a problem for either variants. Next up, we have the benchmark abuse. So firing up Geekbench 5 on both phones and wow, look at that score. Qualcomm just absolutely humiliates the Exynos model. We've got better results in both single and multi-core score. Running the Geekbench 5 application two more times and the Exynos kept bringing its score down more noticeably in the single core department. And while I was doing all this, I even noticed that the display kind of dimmed. I had the display brightness set all the way to the max on both phones. The reason why Exynos model is doing this is to avoid the heat up, whereas Qualcomm is still looking pretty bright. Samsung says that it has a brand new cooling system, so we'll see if the Exynos 990 is more optimized to run cooler or not compared to the variant that we saw on the S20 Ultra. For that, I've launched the Antutu benchmark and the Antutu 3D Mark test to completely push these devices to their absolute limits. And again, we have a huge difference when it comes to the scores. Qualcomm version is just massively better. Running the test two more times to see if the scores drop on either models and uh, pretty much Exynos did drop a bit more noticeably. And uh, what was really concerning was actually the CPU temperature. 
The Exynos 990 was considerably hotter than the Qualcomm 865 Plus. I ran the test two more times. The chip may be throttling the performance so that it won't burn out, whereas Qualcomm's temperatures were fairly normal as reflected by the results as well. It was mostly around 45 degrees of temperature level. So, so far, here are the battery percentages. Again, we started off with the 100% battery time. As you can see, we just have a slightly better battery performance on the Qualcomm model. All right, jumping into the gaming stage with proper FPS. FPS meter to calculate exactly which phone is better for gamers. First up we have the PUBG on the Qualcomm Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, setting the graphics to absolute maximum quality. Interestingly we have a extreme frame rate option for the Qualcomm model which we actually don't see on the Exynos Note 20 Ultra. So 10 minutes into PUBG gaming and so far the FPS has been pretty good. I'm really surprised to see how well it runs on the 865 Plus model. We have 60 FPS locked buttery smooth performance with amazing detail. I gotta say, the Adreno GPU is a real beast. Looking at the temperatures, we have pretty normal results. 42 degrees Celsius is looking pretty good. Again, just to remind you, we just jumped directly from benchmarks to this gaming session. And at the same time, measuring the FPS, while doing all of that, it is still 60 FPS locked, which is pretty impressive. Now, checking out the Exynos model, setting everything all the way to the max. Again, there is no extreme frame rate option on the Note 20 Ultra Exynos model, but let's see the performance if there's actually any advantage to not having that option. So inside the actual game, moving around, it seems like the game is actually completely locked at 40 frames per second. Even after playing it for 10 more minutes, it just couldn't go beyond that level. Unlike Qualcomm, which was solid 60 FPS average, there is definitely quite a lot of difference. I will say that it's not laggy, but at the same time, this same device with a different chip that costs the same money is running it so much better. We can find our answer by quickly checking the CPU temperature. Exynos is drastically hotter than the Snapdragon model, which is probably why it is capped at 40. Next up, we have the Call of Duty Mobile, again, setting everything to the max, and once again, Qualcomm model is averaging close to 60 frames per second, absolute smooth, buttery experience. Driving around is giving me an amazing, amazing feel. And this is again consecutive gaming, so I was really, really curious to see if there's any throttling with the 865 Plus chip, considering it's an overclocked version of the 865 chip, but to my surprise, it is running really, really good with no issues at all. Switching to the Exynos 990 model, and once again, I am looking at kind of a mediocre performance for a ultra phone. I mean, it is again capped at 40. As I'm playing around more and more, the FPS kind of goes below 40 as well. It's kind of averaging mostly around 40. So I highly recommend the Qualcomm chip for anyone who's into gaming, especially long-term gaming sessions. Because if I look at the CPU temperature, the Exynos model is running at almost 60 degrees. As I'm playing more and more, more, the temperatures are increasing. Finally, jumping into Asphalt 9, and this is where I start to feel like Qualcomm being pushed to its absolute limits. Again, I set the graphics all the way to the max, 60 FPS locked in the settings, but in the actual game, it was nowhere near to that 60 FPS level because of that consecutive gaming. It was still averaging 40 FPS beyond 40 FPS average performance. Still, it was very much playable, no issues. And checking out the temperatures, once again, pretty much the same norms of the Qualcomm chipset, nothing out of ordinary. Switching to the Exynos model with the Asphalt 9 and was kind of surprised to see that in the first lap, it seems to perform a little bit better than the Qualcomm model, going beyond 50 frames per second, but again, not quite 60 FPS. With second lap, things starting to get a bit down. I could see the FPS going below 40, uh, but still the performance was kind of better than the other two games of the Exynos model. Looking at the CPU temperature again, and it was going beyond 60 degrees. In total, the gaming session was about 40 minutes max on both phones with the FPS meter running. Overall, once again, there is a drastic difference between the two devices. Qualcomm is the one built for gamers, not the Exynos model. Now let's talk about cameras. We have the same camera on both phones, but because of the different processor, we have different image processing. There are some few differences here and there, but I was actually blown away at the night mode selfies. The Qualcomm
Exynos model took pretty noticeably better night mode selfies than the Exynos model. I was actually really surprised by this difference. Definitely a big difference in the detail. I actually took this image twice just to be sure. When it comes to the night mode from the back camera, we have a slightly brighter image on the Qualcomm model but not necessarily a better image. Both have same kind of detail and noise levels going on in a normal night mode scenario. But in this example, I took this image in a pretty pitch dark environment and if I actually zoom in on the window, you can see that it's a bit sharper on the Qualcomm model. Not just that. Now, as far as the normal images are concerned, they look pretty similar. But when you zoom in onto text and pixel peep everything, Qualcomm appears to have that extra layer of sharpness. But again, nothing too drastic like the night mode selfie difference we saw. Now, I personally always wanted to see how Instagram will work on both models, what slight differences we will have because of the difference in the processor. And straight up, I've noticed that taking images in like an indoor environment, Qualcomm has a slight edge again uh, just a little bit more crispiness on my face if you actually look closely so overall verdict wise i don't think camera is a big issue i mean samsung has to do some better software optimization on the night mode selfies for the exynos model especially in a challenging lighting situation the main issue is with thermal throttling performance and long-term gaming sessions because of how similar the general usage is a lot of customers don't see the actual truth and samsung as a brand they don't even mention it which is kind of misleading and again both of these two phones cost the same amount of money which in my opinion is super unfair so based on my testing the exynos model is not the ultra model you deserve is the snapdragon 865 plus variant it's kind of sad that it has come to this because note 20 ultra is such a great phone but a lot of people won't be buying this because of this chipset issue but i'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section below if you guys enjoyed this please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and why not subscribe to the channel for future videos i'll see you guys in the next one peace out